afterwards from the NCAA Media Hub. We will take questions from the uh, interview room first, and then we'll move on to anybody who is joining us via Zoom. Uh, we ask that you please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. And we ask that your questions please pertain to the game that is upcoming. Uh, joining us for the first press, practice day press conference for Stanford is head coach Tara Vanderveer. Coach, if you'd like to make an opening statement, you're more than welcome, and we'll take questions. Oh, we're very excited to be here. Uh, we're looking forward to the tournament and uh, just, you know, uh, excited to get on the court and get the game going. All right, raise your hand and we'll uh, bring the microphone to you. We'll start down here in front. Nick Krupke with KPTV here in Portland. When you recruited Cam, and the bond you have with her and her family. How sweet is it for her to come back through here on her final run back to a place that she calls home? Uh, Nick, great question. Um, you know, we're really excited to be in this Portland Regional and not just for Cam, but for uh, you know, our fans on the West Coast. And um, it, it is uh, it's just great to be here. And you know, to, to go full circle is really a fun thing. So it's great for her to be able to, to play here with uh, her family and uh, the support that she has uh, in the Portland area. Sorry. Can you say your question again, please? Yeah, yeah. sorry. It's Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, you've had a lot of really special front court combinations at Stanford. What is it about Cam and Kiki that sets them apart? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, like you said, we've had uh, Chinea Ogumake and Neko Ogumake or Jane Appel and I think that um, for the most part, our, our team has, you know, our program has had great post players and Cam and Kiki are two of the best. Uh, they score, uh, they rebound, uh, they both defend. Um, and I think the thing is that they have a really special bond. Uh, they're, you know, sisters from a different mother. They really, uh, they encourage each other, they support each other, um, they're, they're really close. Um, they warm up together down the, on the same side. And uh, I think that this year, uh, Cam has really helped Kiki, and Kiki's really helped Cam. Uh, they've been each other's best support on the court and off the court. Uh, Austin White, Portland Tribune. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, Katie, your assistant coach. Uh, you know, what do you about, remember about first recruiting her back uh -huh. in the 80s? And yeah. what's, what's been so impressive with her as, as a coach now? Well, uh, Katie Stedding uh, played at Lake Oswego High School, and when I came out from Ohio State, um, the, this was the, the uh, end of the trail tournament. It was the first tournament I went to, and I was kind of worried. I, you know, we had some great, great players at Ohio State, and I just thought, well, I'm going to this little tournament. And then I, I saw Katie and Tricia Stevens in, like, the first game. I'm thinking, oh, okay, this is going to be okay. And there were only, like, eight teams or 12 teams at that tournament at the time, and it, it built up to – Oh, hundreds and hundreds of teams. And Katie was our first uh, player that we signed at Stanford. And uh, she, um, she set the record for the most three-pointers in the Final Four. Uh, it was broken last year by Caitlin Clark. Um, she was an Olympian, uh, someone that, you know, had a great career at Stanford, but also, you know, went on to play professionally. And uh, she, uh, she, she's very, very intelligent woman and she really she an incredible I call her the grinder she works really hard and it's great to have her on her staff um, she's also uh, tremendously loyal and you know someone that I've known you know what almost 40 years so uh, we work really well together and I love having her on our staff hi Tara how are you good good to see you Alexa Philpoo, ESPN. Uh, when you think about this NC State matchup, this is a team that was maybe a little bit surprising in the ACC just because of uh, who they lost and the improvement that the mm -hmm. players of Westmore has were able to, to make this season. So what sticks out to you about them and this matchup going into tomorrow? Well, you know, I think they're a very balanced team. Uh, they have, uh, you know, five people in double figures. Um, they're they're a very, I mean, a very well-coached team. I mean, West does a great job. Um, they have an inside game, outside game. Um, they're, you know, they, they, they like to run. Uh, we like to run, too. So I think it should be a high-scoring game, up-tempo game. Um, they're, um, they're athletic guards, uh, shoot the ball well. Um, so I think it should be a really great matchup. But I, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. They have, they have a lot of talent on their team. 
Hi, Annie Peterson from Associated Press. Um, I, Wes was kind of joking the other day about how he thought that this, <clears throat> this would be his trip to the West Coast. He hoped that it counted as his trip to the West Coast to play you next season. But have you kind of thought about, like, is this, is this game kind of a preview of kind of what's to come for ACC? Well, you know, we have played a couple ACC teams uh, this year already. We, uh, we played Duke and we played um, Florida State. Um, and in the past, we have played uh, Boston College, Notre Dame. We played Louisville in the tournament. So I feel like we, um, any more basketball, there's the conferences, but you, you play everybody. And, you know, we've been in tournaments with NC State before. So, uh, you know, this, uh, it doesn't feel like a conference game. I mean, it's an NCAA game, but we know it will be next year. And we're, we're uh, very excited to have that competition next year. Jesse Doherty with the Washington Post. I'm over here, sorry, in the okay, corner. Great. Um, apologies if you've been asked this like a million different ways, but if, uh, if a units program came to the women's tournament in the near future, which it seems like it might, um, what would that mean for the sport overall? What kind of effects could that have? Well, I've heard they're doing a retroactive units program, and um, I think that would be wonderful. <laughs> um, I don't you know, know about that one, but. <laughs> the, um, you know, I think that it would be, um, I think it would really show kind of how far women's basketball has come. Um, I'm someone that is in favor of that. And, you know, I, I joked about it, but um, it would be fun to do the math of how many times we've been in the tournament and how far we've gone. And, you know, if in fact that was uh, a program, uh, how much that would have um, benefited our, you know, Stanford. But um, I, think, I think we're right there. And it's uh, evidenced by the support in this room, uh, the national coverage of women's basketball, the ratings on television. Um, you know, we still, I think we still have some, we have some work to do to figure out, we've grown so fast that we haven't necessarily kept up with every single uh, change. You know, the landscape has changed so fast, but um, you know, I, I think personally we're, we kind of, um, you know, it would be nice to be spreading this regional out. You know, I, I know this is my first time with eight teams, but um, I think I think we're we're there, and but the units program is a it's um, something that would signify it would signal women's basketball has arrived. Brenna Green, Coin Six. As your time uh, coaching Cameron wraps up, what are you going to miss the most about coaching her? Well, let's see. Where should I start? Um, you know, her block shots, her, uh, her fire coming to the game, her competitiveness, um, her skill. She is an incredible athlete. Uh, she runs the floor really well. She has great hands. Uh, she battles. Um, I think just her, um, you know, her, her, she plays every af aspect of the game. She plays offense, defense, rebounding. Um, and I think that she still has um, a, a really, I mean, I think she's really scratching the surface of how good she can be. Um, you know, as she goes forward, you know, playing more perimeter, uh, being a more consistent shooter, being uh, a perimeter defender, uh, just uh, the absolute sky's the limit. I think, uh, I think Cam has uh, an incredible future, and it's been fun to be part of her uh, journey. Oh, Tara, way over here. Hi. Good morning. Michelle Smith from Hi, the Michelle. Next. Um, both Lindsey Gottlieb and Corey Close discussed after their games the other night that you had sent a group text to the Pac-12 coaches at some point, and it was just sort of a, a one last huddle maybe, a virtual huddle with everybody. Can you just talk about what your impetus for that was and maybe share a little bit about what you got back? Well, um, you know, whenever we go into the tournament, I, I try to text all the different coaches, and we had so many teams in the tournament, I just said, what the heck, I'm just going to do one big one. And... I just said, you know, um, as we end, um, you know, our Pac-12 um, kind of family, you know, just want to wish everyone best of luck in the tournament and, you know, going our separate ways, you know, just that uh, we've had a great and special thing. Uh, the, the coaches uh, in our Pac-12 um, responded like, you know, uh, we're, we're really a close um, sorority fraternity. Um, I feel like I can call any single coach, talk to them. Um, we've, uh, we, just, we have a really close group, and it is incredibly sad to see the end of such a great conference 
that has the most teams in the Sweet 16. Uh, we had, you know, I think three other teams that played in the uh, an, another postseason tournament, W, whatever it was, W uh, NIT or the new one. But um, it's not just the fact that these team our teams are successful. Uh, we have worked together to make the Pac-12 successful. The coaches have worked together, uh, administrators, and we, we represent great universities. So if anything, it was kind of a, a best wishes, but uh, remember how special it has been. Lindsay. Hi, Tara. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, Tara, there's been a lot of talk to your point about, you know, the game has improved so much, it's growing so much, but the officiating has not really kept up with that. As someone who's been in the game a long time, I wondered, <laughs> number one, how do you think officiating can get better overall? And number two, a couple coaches have told me they would entertain the idea of getting one challenge like they do in college football. So you could challenge any call during a game and they would have to go to the monitor and review it. What do you think about that? Well, the first question, uh, you know, just about, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not one to be up and screaming and hollering and getting a lot of technicals and things like that. I, in my mind, I wanted to say, you know, our officials are, uh, they're good people with integrity. They're working as hard as they can. Um, we're partners in this game, coaches, players, officials, and, you know, we're, we're trying as hard as we can. The role of an official is to make sure that someone, uh, you know, basically that it's fair. And so, I know that they're working as hard as they can, and I try to give them uh, that, that grace. There are some times where it drives me crazy with some of the calls. Um, I think that, um, you know, I think that sometimes games are, you know, they let people beat people up, and I've seen that during the year, and I've seen uh, Cam really get some incredibly physical play. Um, and I also have seen some absolute just, you know, heavy breathing calls. So. Uh, I think that if, if there's anything that would be helpful for coaches and players is a consistency so that you're going into a game, you kind of know what to expect. And uh, as far as the challenge, uh, I, I don't know that I agree with that. They, all, they go to the monitor too much for me anyway. Um, and, you know, it slows the game down. And, you know, I think that that's just, you know, the fact that you can review maybe the last minute uh, or last two minutes, I think that's, that's good enough for me. But, um, you know, it, it, I, I don't, I, it's hard to be an official. It's hard to be an official because of the, the poor sportsmanship that we sent, see demonstrated by coaches, by players, by um, fans. And uh, I just, I think they are uh, a, a part of the game that we need and we need them to do well for our game to do well. Coach Orlando Sanchez, KGW TV here in Portland. Um, I'm curious if you remember what any of those early conversations were like with Cameron when you were initially recruiting her and what you saw in her and how she's evolved, not only as a player, but as a person. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the first conversation I had, I wasn't in the room with. Um, actually, uh, she came to summer camp and my sister Heidi uh, was at running camp and Cam thought Heidi was me. But, um, and that's probably good because Heidi's nicer than me. But um, uh, Amy Tucker basically offered her as an eighth grader. And Cam, I think, thought she was offering her to come back to camp again, but she was offering her a scholarship. So, um, you know, I watched Cam uh, play, but, uh, you know, as a young player and, and just, um, just knew that she had such great potential. And um, she has obviously realized that. And Maggie will have our last question. Maggie Vanoni, CT Insider. This is our second year of the two-site regional format. I'm just wondering your thoughts, since we still have two more, years, two more years of this format as well. Well, this is my first year in it. So uh, I, I, just, I think that women's basketball, you know, sometimes we make decisions like that going you know, making them for two and three and four years out that then we're not in that same place. Um, I think that with, um, I think there's four teams here would be great. Um, having, you know, w w I don't know that we have it figured out yet what is best for women's basketball. And, and but, but when we figure it out now, it might be different in two or three years. So, you know, I think that's a little bit of a dilemma. But I, I, uh, I think that the, 
you know, we have to decide for women's basketball, are we gonna keep playing home sites? Are we gonna, you know, go to one site, you know, go to Vegas? Are we gonna uh, go to four sites? Um, and that's, uh, that. those are for the powers to be. And we are out of time. Coach Vanderveer, thank you very thank much. Thank you all very much. Great to see everyone. We will have the Sanford student athletes here in a few minutes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Terrific. So, who, who's going to be Mike Handlers? You, you yes, too. We'll Come on out. Quentin, here's our Mike Handlers. They're professionals, not amateurs. Once again, quick reminders before we get going to the press conference, please silence all cell phones. Uh, no flash photography and no video may be taken in the press conference. If you want to use the video of the press conference, you may download it from the NCAA Media Hub. We will take questions from the media room first, followed by reporters that are joining us on Zoom. Uh, please state your name and affiliation and the player you are directing the question to uh, before you ask your question. And we ask that you please as you can, please try to keep your questions pertaining to the upcoming game. Uh, joining us, student athletes from Stanford, Cameron Brink, Kiri Erioffen, and Hannah Jump. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and we'll open the floor to questions. Start down here in front with Nick. Cam, Nick Krupke from KPTV. How sweet is this basketball life that on your last run here at the Cardinal that you're coming back to the hometown? It's amazing. It's so great to be home. I mean, I live 15 minutes from here, so I got to see my parents last night, my grandma, my dog, so life's good. I'm just soaking it all in for sure. Go to Lindsay. Hi, Cam. Uh, Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. So um, you got to see your dog, your grandma. Did you get to eat anywhere? Where are you recommending that your teammates go to get food in this wonderful food city? Is it called Jake's, the seafood place? Yeah. Jake's, Jake's is so good. And then El Gaucho is a really good steakhouse. Um, but last night I had my grandma's pot roast, so I'm very happy. Down here to Kiri. Uh, Cameron, Kerry Eggers, KerryEggers.com. You played in Eugene and Corvallis many times. How many times have you played in the Moda Center? Have you played here? Maybe once when I was younger, but never before. I've watched my godbrother Seth and Steph play here a lot, so it's definitely really cool to be in this arena. It's a great arena, so I think we're all really excited to be here. Yep. Michelle Smith from the next Kiki, this one is for you. Coming off of your big game on Sunday, 
are you, you know, how do you expect, level your expectations in terms of what you do when you go out there in the next game after you've come off a really big game? Yeah, I think just honing in on my scout, I feel like I'm more focused defensively. I know my offense will come, so making sure we keep those guards in front of us, um, boxing out, rebounding, and then offensively, the game will come to us. Brenna? Can we bring the other mic over, please? Cameron Brennan Green, Queen Six. Um, how does it know, how does it feel knowing that this could be the last time you're playing in your hometown for a very long time, possibly ever? Um, honestly, I'm at peace with it. I think to play my last potential game in front of family in Portland at home is is bittersweet, but it's really wonderful, and I'm just really happy to be here. And I just have a great sense of peace, honestly, just being here. It's it's I just love Portland. I feel at home. Alexa Philpo, ESPN. Hannah Tara was up here talking about the guards that NC State has and how athletic they are. What have you seen just in the scout so far about the, the problems that they pose, but also the ways that you guys can also threaten them on the other end? Yeah, we spent the last few days really honing in on the scout. Um, I think, you know, they're a really quick team, so getting back in transition will be um, huge for us and just making sure we're boxing out and keeping people in front of us. But, you know, they got to guard them too, right? So we got two, you know, big inside presence that, um, you know, they're going to have to find a way to uh, guard, and I think that's going to be kind of the positive for us coming in tomorrow. Uh, Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. Kiki and Hannah, first of all, did you also get some of Grandma's pot roast, or was that an only, only the Brink family? Just Cam. <laughs> um, Hannah, I wondered if you could talk about, obviously, Kiki and Cam are just an incredible, like, one-two punch in the paint. What is that like as a guard, knowing, you know, especially if you take a shot, like, hey, if this doesn't go in, I got someone that can probably get an offensive rebound. And how fun is it to play with, you know, two All-Americans? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, Tara always says we play inside out. Um, so if they're getting double teamed, they're going to find a way to kick it out to the guards and, you know, we're going to hit our shots. Um, but, yeah, you, I think, you know, we pose a lot of challenges for our opponents and, you know, see, see what they can do with it. Um, but I think, you know, we're super excited about where we are and excited to play tomorrow. Uh, Ryan Clark, Oregonian. Cameron, um, Tara mentioned that when you were first being recruited by Stanford as an eighth grader, uh, you were at a camp and, and you mixed up her sister with her. You thought her sister was Tara. Yeah. Um, and what, what do you remember about, um, about your recruiting experience and then coming up through uh, the, the high school ranks in Oregon, uh, knowing that Stanford was, was somewhere you wanted to be? Um, yeah, I mean, I remember I was going into the eighth grade and I thought Heidi was Tara and Heidi's actually with us. So she's great, I love Heidi. Um, but yeah, it was honestly a dream to be offered that soon. I think it really just set my sights clearly. I knew I needed to focus on school because we all know it's, it's hard to get in even if you're a student athlete. So, but yeah, I think especially playing in the state of Oregon, it's a great state. I mean, we have Nike. My parents worked for Nike for 20 plus years. I've just been surrounded by amazing basketball culture. So I wouldn't rather grow up anywhere else. It was wonderful. And yeah, I think it just worked out wonderfully. Like so. Uh, for both Kiki and Cam, Tara was saying how she thinks that just the way that you guys support each other and, and are pushing each other, but also like each, each other's best support has really helped you guys on the court. So I was curious if you remember like a moment or a time when your relationship off the court really started to flourish. Was it this year just knowing that Kiki was gonna have a bigger role or did it even date back earlier? Yeah, I can remember a moment in the spring. So it was still last school year and Cameron like took me out to lunch. We went to Gotts. And it was just, <laughs> it was just her and I, and we kind of just talked, like not even about basketball, but really getting to know each other. I feel like prior to them, we were kind of just competitors, but now it was like, I get to know Cameron as a, as a person, she gets to know me as a person. And I think that kind of just laid the foundation for the season that we have right now. And then from there, we just, you know, really got to know each other and we, we truly love each other. So I think that's been really helpful for us on the court. Come here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cash Sam at the Stanford Daily. Uh, for Hannah, um, you've been shooting really well these past two games. You know, for you, is the basket just, you know, bigger? Uh, you know, once you see, once you see your, you know, little daylight, do you feel confident just letting it go? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to let the game come to me. 
kind of play within the offense and you know once you know they're getting doubled and they kick it out trying to hit my shot um, but then just focusing on other things whether that's defensive scout um, just kind of being a leader out there and I think once I focus more on that then my shot shot comes hi Cam uh, Orlando Sanchez KGW TV here in Portland what is the family ticket situation like <laughs> how many family members <laughs> Are you anticipating for this game? Um, honestly, as many tickets as I can get. I feel like I've had to beg all, like, especially the great girls to stop, you know, and I'm like, please, if you have any extra. Um, but yeah, I'm so lucky to have such an amazing support system here. And, you know, I'm just, I just love everyone in Oregon, family, friends, everybody. So they have just made a huge impact in my life. And to have them present for potentially my last few games as a, you know, college basketball player is, is really special. Brenna? Mike? This man doesn't like me. Oh, goodness. We'll get better batteries. <laughs> Brennan Green going six. Cam, you've, you've made mention multiple times about this being a great basketball city. I just was wondering what your thoughts were when you saw the WNBA bid fall apart for this city and, and if you think that this city deserves a WNBA franchise. I mean, I, ob I really think that Portland deserves a franchise here. I think... I think people would really rally behind a team here and they would support us. So I think I was sad about it. I mean, obviously the Bay is a good second for me because in, you know, at Stanford we're close by. Um, but yeah, hopefully one day, I think the way people are supporting women's basketball now as a whole, that there's, you know, only more room for expansion and, you know, we just have so much talent and the fact that there's so few roster spots is a shame. So hopefully there's more expansion and I feel like this would be a great place to go next. Any other questions? Nick, over here on the far side. Nick Strang with the Oregonian. Uh, Cameron, there's been a lot of like really good talent coming out of the state uh, for a few years, not only just yourself, but uh, Donovan Hunter and Kennedy Schuler at Oregon State and Sophia Bell at uh, Oregon and Jazzy Davidson coming up in a couple years. Um, how excited are you for the girls basketball scene from your home state right now? Yeah, honestly, I know. I mean, I remember we were just up at Oregon State, and I went up to Kennedy and Donovan. I was like, you guys, like, are putting on for Oregon basketball. I'm so proud. And obviously, Jazzy's an amazing player. And, you know, I mean, I remember grow up, growing up playing against the likes of Avina Westbrook. So it's just a really great state, and I think we all really support each other as women's basketball players. So I'm just really proud to be a part of that legacy, for sure. Anything else? Uh, this is for Cam and Kiki both. Uh, I think we all saw that TikTok that you posted with Tara um, on Cam's TikTok. Uh, you got any future ones planned? <laughs> she keeps saying, you know, we had to win to do to learn more dances. So now we have to hold her to it and do another one. I guess I just have to go scroll and find another one. What do you think? Yeah, I think we keep on winning and we'll have more dances coming. So yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> Hello? Okay. I'm going to ask a follow-up on that. Tara is known for a lot of things. Fashion is not one of them. Yes. Have you guys ever made any sort of... I'm just saying, you guys, like, there are people on the sideline who are wearing crazy outfits, and Tara is... She's focused on the scouting report. Mm -hmm. Have you ever made any sort of bet with her um, that if you won a certain game, you guys would get to dress her for the next game? Should we do that now? 1,000%. <laughs> and what is your ideal outfit for her to wear? I want to see Tara in a dress. I was just about to say a dress. And some heels, yeah. So we got her a necklace for winning, you know, breaking that record. And she wears that for every game. And I think it's really sweet. But she keeps it simple. She wears her little joggers and her running shoes. Um, I think once COVID hit, she said she'd never go back to, you know, fancy wear for games. So maybe we have to hold her to that. Anything else? All right, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.